Good day everyone! The topic that we are going to discuss today is about chemical elements and isotopes in the universe. Maybe some of us are wondering where atoms come from and what they really are. For us to easily understand atoms, these are the basic unit of matter and defining entity configurations. The name atom derives from the Greek word for indivisible, since atoms have been once believed to be the smallest entities in the universe and cannot be split or divided. We now realize that atoms consist of three particles, which are protons, neutrons, and electrons, consisting of many smaller particles like quarks. Protons are positively charged subatomic particles, neutrons are uncharged particles denoting neutrality, and electrons are negatively charged particles. Either living or non-living things, the whole matter is made up of chemical elements. These molecules are basic in the way that they are as they are. They are not something else that can be modified. There is an ideal proton-to-neutron ratio for each kind of nucleus. Thus, atoms decay even though they have small nuclei if they have too many or too few neutrons. The stable ratio is fairly 1 is to 1 for light elements such as carbon and oxygen. Heavier elements need a small neutron surplus. Dimitri Mendeleev invented the periodic table. Periodic tables are composed of elements which are grouped by atomic numbers, electron configurations, and repetitive chemical characteristics. Proton is the one that determines which element an atom belongs to. For example, one proton is hydrogen while two protons are helium and so forth. We disregard the electrons when looking at the mass because protons and neutrons are much more massive than electrons. So, where do these chemical elements come from? The stars do not emit light but also release chemicals. Big Bang Theory explains that the universe originates due to an explosive expansion from a point source or singularity 12 billion years ago. It was then followed by a period of inflation where protons and neutrons condensed out of the initial quantum soup. A young star is mostly made up of hydrogen, the simplest chemical element that leads to the formation of other elements. Elements beyond Hydrogen were formed in stars, where there is a large concentration of matter and high temperature. Initially, protons and electrons are separated, but because of high pressure in a star, two protons can squeeze together or sometimes a proton will capture an electron forming a neutron. For example, two protons and two neutrons band together, the second element, helium, is formed. During the explosion, other elements were created and after the explosion, the chemicals in space combined with each other to form ions and molecules. Where are these found? Earth is composed of 90 chemical elements, of which 81 have at least one stable isotope. Most of these elements have also been detected in stars and traveled in planets such as the Earth. How are these elements found in the universe? During ancient times, natural philosophers conflated properties of things with limited ideas of fundamental components. And as a result, earth, air, fire, and water were thought of as elements. For many years, most people believed these ideas. Today, the most common method used to determine the chemical composition of stars, planets, and other objects is visible spectroscopy. It is done through a device called a spectroscope which uses grating that spreads out the light from an object by wavelength. This spread out light is called an emission spectrum and their position and intensity vary depending on the chemical element that emits the light. Every element and combination of elements has a unique fingerprint when the light they emit is spread in a spectroscope. For example, hydrogen spectrum is composed of four lines which are purple, blue, green, and red. On the other hand, helium is composed of six lines that are purple, cyan, green, yellow, orange, and red. The overall strength or weakness of all the lines of an element depends on the number of atoms of that element. The more elements an object contains, the more complicated its spectrum can become. With this method, scientists have been able to determine the sun's relative number of atoms from specific elements and infer their percentage by mass. Here are our references. Thank you!